Hey class, in this video, we're going to be going over creating obstacles and enemies. So we'll be designing the graphics and animations for a static obstacle and a animated or moving enemy. So we'll go over how to make those and export the sprite sheets and then add them into Godot. We have some pre-built obstacle scenes that we can add our art into. So then we'll do some documentation and post our sprite sheets on the open lab. So let's get started. So I'll get started drawing my obstacle. And this is just going to be a stationary obstacle in the scene. And so it'll behave similarly to the enemy, but it won't be moving. And so we don't really need animations for this. You could use animations if you want, but I'm going to make a few still frames and then just use them as different obstacles throughout the scene. So the first thing I'll do is save my file and I'm going to make sort of a thorny vine that the player can run into. I'm just going to call this obstacle underscore plant so that it will be organized in my folder. So I'll make a new obstacles folder inside of my art folder and save the file in there. And then I'm going to choose a color. I'll start with a green color and just kind of draw the stem of this plant. And that looks pretty good. I might want to choose a lighter color just so it'll stand out a little bit. There's already a lot of green in my scene, so I might want to give this a brighter shade just so it'll be a little more visible. So then I'll make a darker color, a kind of like brown, almost black to make the thorns. And so we just want to make some spikes here, make it look kind of dangerous so the player will know not to run into it. Otherwise, it'll kind of just look like a flower and the player might not think that it is an obstacle. So you could do other stuff, like maybe you could put a little blood on the spikes or something like that, but we just want to show the player visually that they don't want to run into this obstacle. Otherwise, it might feel like a little bit of a trick. So I'm going to put a little flower at the end of this just to give some more color and contrast into the scene. So I'm going to choose a purple color and put a little shading in there to make it look like a flower. And so that just adds a little detail so it'll stand out a little bit more and it'll be easier to see. So I'm going to go to the next frame and I'm just going to draw a completely new plant. And this one will just be a separate obstacle that's not going to be an animation, but I can include them in a sprite sheet and then use Godot to choose different frames of the sprite sheet. So that way I don't have to have multiple files for this one type of obstacle. So I'm going to draw a bunch of plants, but you could theoretically draw all sorts of different stuff and just choose different frames to put in your scene at various points. So I'm going to do something very similar. I'm going to use the same colors. I'm going to create a plant shape and then add the thorns on it and then add the flower detail as well. I kind of like that flower circle area. So let's go back and edit the first flower so they look similar. And then I'll draw a third frame and I'm going to do basically the same thing here. Draw the green plant and then the dark thorns and then the purple flower at the top. And I could keep going. You could really add as many frames as you wanted to, but I'll just do three frames for this example. And when we add it into Godot a bit later, we'll see that there's a script that will allow us to choose different frames for different copies of the obstacle throughout the scene. Once I'm happy with the three versions of my obstacle, I'm going to download a sprite sheet. So I'll go to export and click the download sprite sheet button and save it in my obstacles folder. Next, I'll work on creating the enemy. And I'm going to make a snake for this example. And the enemy will move around the scene and have a few different animations. So since it's moving, we want a walk animation to move back and forth. And we'll have an idle animation for when it's not moving. And then we'll have an attack animation for when it runs into the player. So I'm going to start here with just kind of a basis for the snake. I'm going to choose a slightly different green color so it will stand out from the other greens in the scene. And I'm just going to draw this kind of snake shape. And let's save this file before I forget. And now I've got the snake shape. I'm going to get kind of a red color to draw the eyes and the tongue. This isn't 
going to be super realistic, but I want to use red to sort of indicate to the player that the snake is dangerous. And so once I have the eyes, I'm going to duplicate this frame a couple times. And for my idle animation, I'm just going to be, I'm just going to use the tongue and make it kind of twirl around a little bit. So the snake will have a very simple animation just to show that it is there and moving. And maybe the tongue will look a little menacing, but it's just going to be something really simple. I can come back and add to this later if I want, but I just need some kind of idle animation to show that the snake is this moving alive object. Depending on how you set up the scene, you might not really see the idle animation. The snake may be moving the whole time. So drawing the tongue was a little tricky because I'm running out of space. And so I'm going to use the move tool and hold command to move all of the frames at the same time. So that way it won't break my animation. And so now I have a little bit more room to finish this last frame. So I'm happy with that idle animation. So I'll export my sprite sheet. So I'll just go to the export menu and click the download on the sprite sheet and save that in my obstacles folder. And now we can move on to the walk animation. And so this is just going to be a really simple animation. I'm just going to have two frames where the snake kind of bounces up and down. So I'm not going for realism here. I'm just going for a very basic way to create some motion, similar to the character animations that I did. So of course, you could spend more time and put more detail here. But just for the sake of the demo, I just want to make something really simple just to convey that the snake is moving. And then we'll see once we're in the game, it won't stand out so much because we'll be trying to avoid the snake and thinking about the game mechanics. We won't really be looking so closely at the animation. So I'm just going to take that first frame from the idle and then make a new frame and turn on the onion skin so I can kind of copy it a little bit, but I'll just move the snake up a little bit over here and kind of down a bit over here. And so it'll make it look like the snake is kind of moving up and down. And we can see the preview of the animation that looks pretty decent. And so now we just have to add in the eyes and the tongue to finish this off. And so that looks pretty good. And now I want to go ahead and save it. And at this point, I kind of realized that I hadn't saved my walk animation correctly. I forgot to click the Save As button, which I've done a few times in these videos, but that's OK. You can see I just kind of went back to the idle version and then save that as idle and then save this as walk again. And now everything is back to normal and I can export my sprite sheet. So now I'm going to work on the attack animation. And this time I'm going to click Save As on my PISCAL file and not make that mistake again. So for my attack animation, I'm just going to delete the second frame from my walk animation and add a couple new frames. And I'm going to do the same basic approach that I did with the walk animation. I'll turn on the onion skin and sort of draw over the first frame. So it'll be kind of similar but it'll be the next frame of this sort of animation. So I'm going to have the snake kind of move its head back a little bit so it's getting ready to attack in the second frame. And then I'll make another frame where the snake kind of lunges forward towards the character. But I'm just using that first frame as a guide. And then I'll create three new frames for the attack animation. And so this animation will come out of the snake moving or standing idly. And so it'll move out of that first frame nicely. So for the first frame, I'll have the snake kind of moving its head back a bit, and I'll just kind of adjust the rest of the snake body a bit. And then for the next frame, I can make some more adjustments and trace over the second frame. I'll maybe curl up the tail a little bit and then bring the snake's head forward a bit. So it's sort of attacking in the direction of the player. And then in the final frame, I'll continue with the animation, moving the snake even closer to the player to kind of finish that attack animation. So I'm trying a few different things here, and I'm looking at the preview window to kind of see how the motion looks to see what it'll look like in the game. And so a few of these things don't look quite right, so I'm just trying some different stuff until I get the right motion and sort of the right feeling for this animation. So now I've got the three frames that I want to work with. And so I'm going to go back to the first frame and just add eyes. And I'm going to replace the tongue with some fangs. So it'll make the snake look a little more 
kind of scary and menacing and like it's about to attack the player. So once I've got that look for the first frame of the animation, I'll just go through the second and third frame and add in the eyes and the fangs. And I'm playing around a little bit with exactly how they're positioned and how they look. So that looks pretty good. I can get rid of the first frame now. I don't need that guide anymore. So now I just have my three frames for the attack animation. And then the tail on this third frame looks a little wonky. So I'm just going to try to clean that up for a second. Okay, that looks pretty good. So let's go ahead and export this sprite sheet. So I'm gonna save it and then go to export and click download and save that as obstacle snake attack. And so the last animation that I wanna add is the dies animation. So now I'm gonna change the name to obstacle snake dies and save that as a new file. And now I will go back to my first frame and kind of reset this and then start working on the dies animation. I'm going to do something really simple for this again. I'm just going to kind of squish the snake down. And so it'll just be a few frames that play before the snake is removed from the scene altogether. So once I've got that first frame kind of reset with just the eyes, I'm going to trace over for the next frame and just squish the snake down a little bit. And then we can go to the third frame and we'll squish the snake down even more. I'm just going to kind of squish his whole body down and bring his head down here. Now that we've got the basic shapes for the body, let's go in and fill in the tongue and the eyes for each frame. And we want to emphasize that the snake is getting squished and dying. So I'm going to kind of flatten out the tongue, maybe make the eyes a little bigger or kind of X's or something like that to emphasize that the snake is getting squished and dying. All right, so that looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and download that sprite sheet and save the Piskel file as well. And now we should have all of the obstacle art that we need. So we have our basic plant obstacle with a few frames, and then we've got four animations for our enemy or moving obstacle. And so I'll take all those images and just zip them up just to make it easier to share them. And I'll call that obstacles. And in the next part of the video, we'll go over how to add these into a Godot scene. So now that we've created the art for our obstacles, we can add them into a Godot project. So there's a few different ways you could do this. If you have a game, you might want to add them in there in your sprites folder, but you may need some scenes to use there. So you could download the assets folder and use the pre-built scenes from the example scenes. So you would need the obstacle moving and the obstacle simple scene. And so you could throw those into a game that you're already working on and then add your art in there. You could also use the artist default folder if you've already got that, if you've already worked on that a little bit, or you could download it and work from there as well. So I'm just gonna work with the artist default folder that I've already got. And so I need to put my files in there so I'm going to go back to my obstacles folder and just select each one of my files and copy and then go to artist default and go to sprites and paste. And so here we can see all of our images and they should be next to each other since they all start with obstacle. And so now we can go and add those into our Godot project. So I'll open up project.godot. And I want to start with the obstacle simple. So I'm going to go into my scenes folder, find the obstacle simple and open that up. You can see I've got everything I need in there to create the obstacle. Let's zoom in a little bit. You may see some art that's already there as a default to be used in some of the example scenes. 
So if that's the case, you can just click on the sprite and then click on the texture to reset it. And now we can start by adding our own art. So you can see in the obstacle simple, we just have an area collision for the player to run into. There's a hit sound, which you may or may not have in your folder. And there's also a sprite where we're going to add our graphics. So that's what we're going to be working with. So this one isn't animated. You could add in an animated sprite to take place of the static sprite if you want to have a simple obstacle that also includes animation. But for this version, we're just going to use a static image. So I'm going to go to the texture and click load, go to my sprites and find my obstacle. And this is the obstacle plant. So this is a few different frames and they all represent these kind of spiky vines that the player can run into. So I'll click open and that looks pretty good. One thing that the obstacle simple has that the obstacle moving doesn't have is you can change the frame number. So we used a sprite sheet for this and that allows us to show different sprites for different obstacles, which is a good way to kind of add some variety to the scene. So you don't have to do that. If you look in the animation setting, you'll see that the default is set up. So there's two H frames and two V frames. And that makes sense because our sprite sheet has two columns and two rows, even though there's only three frames. If I reset those values, you'll see that it actually shows all of the artwork, which isn't what we want. So we can do that again. You might actually have more frames in different directions if you added more frames to your artwork. You can also change the frame number and that's a permanent change. So if we change the frame number, all of our obstacles will have that frame number. But there's also a parameter in the script to change the frame number. If you change the frame number there, you're not going to see it in the editor. But when you run the scene, you will see that that frame is changed. So it's hard to see here because the obstacle is just up in that corner. But that's what you would do if you wanted to change the frame after the program starts. Depending on the size of your artwork, you may also want to adjust the collider to match where you want the player to get hit. So if you want it to be a little bit easier, you could bring it in a little bit so it's just where the spikes are. Or if you want it to be harder, you could bring it out a little bit. You want to stay inside of the art as much as possible so it doesn't look like the player is hitting some sort of empty space when they hit the obstacle. So I think this is pretty good. We also want to kind of look at the other frames and make sure they don't go too far out of the way. I think that looks pretty decent, so we'll stick with that for the collider. And that's everything that we need to do for the simple obstacle. So now let's add the obstacle moving. I'm going to double click on the obstacle moving scene. And you can see there's a bunch of stuff in here. If you want to learn more about what all these different colliders are doing, I would check out the obstacles lab in the programming tier. For now, we're just going to worry about the art. So we're going to go over to our animated sprite and we're going to create some new animation frames. So I'm going to go over to the frames, click empty, click new sprite frames, and then click on sprite frames. This is the same process that you've done in the character animation lab as well as the rewards lab. So it should be pretty straightforward at this point. For our moving obstacle, we need a few different animations. We need an idle, we need a walk, we need an attack, and then we need a dying animation. We can see what animations are required by looking at the script. If we look at the script and look for anything that says animated sprite, we can see there's a walk animation, there's an idle animation, there's a dies animation, and there's an attack animation. So these are the basic animations that we need to add in. You might have other animations that you want to do. You could change the code to do that. Or you might want to change the names of the animation. You can change the code for that. But let's just stick for now with these defaults. So I'll go back to my 2D scene and open up my animated sprite again. And we can delete that default animation and we'll create a idle animation, a walk animation, an attack animation, and a dies animation. These are our four basic ones. Again, you might have other ones that you want to add in there. So let's go to idle. And so I'm going to click on my waffle and go to my sprites and find my snake idle. So there's my snake idle. It's just three frames. It's pretty simple. When we go to select frames, we can do two horizontal and two vertical and then select each one of our frames and add those in there. You might need to change the animation. So let's change that to idle. And so now we want to kind of line up our colliders. 
So let's hide our colliders so we can just focus on the art. Just gonna turn off the visibility of each one of our colliders. And so now we can see the art without the colliders on top. And so that looks pretty good. Let's move on to our next animation. So let's choose the walk animation. I'm gonna choose a waffle again and find the walk animation and click open. This one only has one column and two vertical rows. So I'll select those two, add that in there. And let's change our preview to walk. Okay, that looks pretty good. It seems a little bit fast, so I might slow it down just a bit. That feels a little bit better, but we can see how that looks in the scene. So next let's do the attack. So I'm gonna click attack. I'll click the waffle again, choose the attack, click open. We have two horizontal and two vertical again. I'll select those frames. Add them in, let's change the preview to attack. So that looks pretty good. This one we could leave looping or turn off looping. You might wanna test how it looks in the scene and then choose. If we leave it looping, it'll look like the snake is attacking over and over again. That might be kind of confusing because when the snake attacks, it's only gonna take one life from the player. So I'm gonna turn loop off. And so we can't see it in the preview anymore unless we change the frame back and then turn playing on. But I think that looks pretty good. So the snake will attack once, and then it will go back to whatever the previous animation was, either walking or idle. And I think that will work the best, but you could play around with different settings here. I'm going to slow this one down a little bit too, since it's only three frames, we don't want to miss it. But your animation might be longer, so you could play with that as well. So now we just have the dies animation. We'll click the waffle again, find snake dies, and we have two horizontal and two vertical. Select the frames and add in the frames. Let's change the preview to dies. So that looks pretty good. Again, we're not gonna want this to loop and I do wanna slow it down a little bit so we don't miss it. So I'm gonna try three FPS. That looks pretty good and I'm gonna turn off loop. And I think that will work. And so there's a bunch of other stuff that we should cover in here. I'm gonna change the default animation back to idle with the colliders. You could move these around a little bit, but if you wanna go into more depth about how these colliders work, again, I would check out the obstacles programming lab, but we can go through them real quick. The circle is what is gonna actually keep the snake on the platform. So we want that to kind of be the size of the snake's body, maybe a little smaller, something like that might be better if we move that around a little bit. The next collider is where the snake can get hit by the player. So I kind of put this near where the head is, but you're going to have to balance this because you don't want this to overlap with where the snake will attack the player. So that's the next collider is the attack. And so you can see it's overlapping. We don't want that. So I'm going to turn off the lock and let's lock up our animated sprite actually so we don't move that around. So then for the attack, I don't want that to overlap with where the snake can get hit because I don't want both of those things to happen at the same time. And so you might wanna put the attack in front of the snake if you want your player to be able to get around the back, or you can make it larger, but you wanna make sure it's close enough that it looks like the player is actually getting hit by the snake. And so you may have to balance this a little bit because now obviously the hit box for the snake is overlapping with this a lot. So it's gonna be hard for the player. It's gonna be hard for the snake to actually attack the player. So let's move the hit back a little bit over here. And so I think that'll be pretty good. You'll have to play around with that to get it right. And you may also wanna just do the programming lab to learn more about how those work. So let's lock these up again. The last collider, this really big one, is gonna set the area where the enemy can detect the player. So there's a setting in the code that you can change that if the player enters this area, that will sort of make the snake start, start walking and otherwise the snake won't be walking. So that's one setting that you can set up. So I think we've got our obstacles set up. Let's take a look at putting them in the game real quick. So I'm gonna open up the default scene and we've got some items and some other stuff in here. Let's try putting some obstacles. So I'm gonna delete the items for now. I had those from my last lab, but I don't really need those at the moment. So let's add in a new node 2D for our obstacles. And then I'm gonna use the instance child scene and we can see our obstacle moving. So I'm gonna add one of those and I'm gonna add our obstacle simple. 
And I'm going to duplicate our moving obstacle just to show the two different settings. So I'll start with the obstacle simple. So we can just put that down here. You can move it around wherever. If the player runs into that, they'll lose a life. So that's pretty straightforward. Then with our moving obstacles, if we have a snake here and we turn on activate on player, you'll see that the snake won't activate until the player gets close. If we take our other snake and put them down here, this snake is going to just start moving immediately. There's another setting over here, stay on platform. If that's on, then the snake will turn around if it hits the edge of the platform. If it's off, the snake will just fall off the platform. So those are some different settings that you can play with. Let's preview the scene. So I'm gonna open this up. You can see one snake is moving. I'm gonna take a screenshot of the player. The other snake is kind of hard to see, but once we get into that area, it starts moving. So we can see the snake attacking. We might want to take a screenshot of that. And it's kind of hard to see because the green blends in with the green of the trees. And that's something I was kind of interested in exploring is making my obstacles kind of hard to see. So the signs are saying, wait, watch out for snakes, but there's also all this green scenery. So it makes it kind of hard to see where the snakes are. So I'm not sure that's 100% working. I might play with the colors of the snakes and do other things, but that's kind of specific to my scene. Depending on what you've got going on in your scene, you might really not have to worry about that as much. So at this point, I've added in the art and it's working, so that's good. I might need to make some tweaks to make it really look the way I want to at this point. But for now, I'm just going to stop here and post some documentation on the open land. So I've got a couple screenshots. I've got everything set up in Godot, so I'm going to leave Godot. And I'll go to the open lab and start a new post. I want to make sure to add the category so I can look for it or I can type in obstacles. And there we go, obstacles and enemies. And I'll add a title. And then add a short description so we know what we're looking for. And then we can include some screenshots from the game. And then we want to add in our sprite sheets. So I'll go back to my obstacles folder and I'm just going to add these one at a time. I haven't really had a lot of luck laying out the galleries with the right settings. So I'm just going to throw these in here. So we'll say vines. This is the snake attack animation. I'll just put the rest of these in here and then do the captions. A little hard to get these in the exact right place, but I've got them all now. So let's add a caption. This is snake dies, snake idle, and snake attacks. Okay, so we can preview that. And that looks pretty good. So let's go ahead and publish.